Today on CityCast Philly. Philly has long been known as a city of homeowners because more than half of all residents here own the home they live in. That's according to the Pew Research Center. But if you're not a homeowner, the process can seem intimidating and expensive. Trust me, I know. I'm talking to some experts who work with first-time buyers to help you understand the process and learn about ways to get money to help pay for it all. It's Monday, May 6th. I'm Trina Nuri, and here's what Philly's talking about. Abraham Reyes Pardo, Vice President of the Office of Housing and Diversion Services at the Urban League of Philadelphia. Welcome to CityCast Philly. Thank you for having us. Hi. Hi, Trina. Sure. And Mary Harper, Director of Housing at the Urban League of Philadelphia. Thank you for joining us as well. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Your group runs regular classes for first-time homebuyers in the city. What's the biggest myth you hear when people come to your programs? The number one myth that people uh, seem to believe is that they can't buy a home. We have connected with a number of individuals over the years, individuals who have demonstrated their ability to sustain a housing payment, yet they believe that homeownership is far-fetched for them. Why do they say they feel that way? Well, first of all, you, you alluded to something very important in terms of Philadelphia. Philadelphia is a city of home ownership, but also has a not so distinctive title of the poorest, largest city in the country. If someone in your family owned a home or a role model or a friend or someone that you were exposed to dealt with issues of home ownership, then chances are that you are better equipped and prepared to deal with those kinds of issues or that you have a trusted source of information that you can go to. But what happens for those individuals who are just breaking out of, of the cycles of, of poverty, don't have those role models, and that's where the role of the housing counseling agencies really becomes more evident. We're here to provide real, verified information on, on how some of these processes work. Yeah. And if I could just add, I've seen a lot of bad experiences a lot of individuals that have may, may have attempted to purchase homes. Um, so just that whole trust factor, I believe sometimes it, it shows a, an obstacle for them. Um, so just knowing that reaching out to the Urban League, we haven't been around over 100 years with taking advantage of individuals. Of course, our goal is to uplift our communities. So um, I just wanted to add that it's it's a lot of bad experiences that some of the um, consumers, when they come in, that they've had. Let's say I've decided that I'm interested in buying a home, but again, I don't know where to start. What's the first step you recommend? Every Saturday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., <laughs> the Urban League of Philadelphia hosts a financial literacy first-time home buyer webinars, seminars, sessions. We provide content related to the home buying process, different actors of the process, how to obtain a mortgage, uh, the home inspection, fair housing, credit and budget. There is a whole array of content that gets covered during those sessions. And then uh, we have a lot of information about grants and down payment assistance programs, financial assistance to buy homes. So that was totally on point. So these webinars are structured so that an individual that is interested in buying a home, the first thing you want to do is educate yourself on the process. So the webinars have, like Abraham mentioned, all the actors that is going to be involved in the process. And each of them talk about what it looks like when you are working with them. We always tell them to educate yourself, then do the one-on-one -on -one counseling session with 
a HUD certified housing counselor who would pretty much screen that individual before they reach out to get a pre-approval from a lender. The reason we do that is because if we know if it's someone that needs a little more assistance, let's say with creating a budget so that they can have more savings, or if there's anything that needs to be worked on with regards to their credit report, we give them the tools and help them along the way to get to that place where they're ready to go to a lender to get a hard pull on their credit report, right? To get a pre-approval. Because if you get that hard pull, that could also impact your credit score sometimes. Yeah, Credit has a lot of relevance in terms of the uh, home buying process when you are buying a house using a mortgage. If someone is trying to get a loan or a mortgage, whatever financial institution is trying to extend credit, they will check that person's credit report. And all of the behaviors that these folks have, all of the transactions, their payment history, etc., will be summarized So it's like being graded, really, that's what it is. We are all being rated as consumers, and ultimately those credit reports assist in determining how trustworthy we are or we can be. They want to make sure that you as the individual that is asking for this credit, you do have the ability to pay, pay them back their money. Yeah, bottom line, they want to make sure you're able to pay them back. How important, though, is maybe income in this whole process? Most lenders will be looking for a two-year employment or continued employment history. It doesn't matter if someone switched jobs as long as they were continuously employed. If there are any gaps in terms of employment, then questions will be asked. Ultimately, income um, over time demonstrates uh, someone's character, someone's capacity to pay the money back. Uh, You might have heard some percentages that are often thrown around when when they talk about how someone is housing burden. The recommendation from the Department of Housing is for someone's housing payment not to exceed 30% of their gross monthly income. We also have the conversation to what is comfortable for you? Do you want to buy a house at that number? Because this is what the payment would look like. So I always ask when I personally do these sessions, because I actually do the one-on-one counseling sessions as well, along with Abraham, what is a comfortable payment for you where you can continue to do the things that you do, such as when uh, you have children, you might want to go to parks, Who you know, you, you want to keep your same lifestyle. You don't want to be with Abraham mentioned as um, house poor, where all of your money is going towards your mortgage payment and you're not really able to do some of the things that you enjoy to do prior to buying a home. More on the process of buying a home in Philly after the break. So, so far, I just want to recap. We have the first step is education. The second step is sitting down with a counselor. Okay, Abraham and Mary, here's an important question. And we were just talking about money. How much is all of this going to cost? How much money does someone actually need to buy a home in Philly? That's a million dollar question. So that <laughs> answering that is going to cost you a million dollars. <laughs> oh my gosh, a million dollars. <laughs> I got to play the lottery. <laughs> no. So right now, and this might come as a shock for some people, there are programs and situations where people can buy a home with as little as $1,000 of their own money. We recommend our clients to have at least $2,500 saved, at least the minimum, because there are some items that they will have to pay for upfront. Ultimately, even though there are programs that will help you with the down payment closing costs, there's still going to be some costs associated with moving into your new home and other stuff. 
But just purely and strictly talking about the home buying process, someone needs to have at least $2,500 of their own funds. And then the other stuff that, that comes with being a homeowner, which implies moving into your new house and being able to handle any repairs if any are needed, because now you're a homeowner. If something breaks down, you're not going to be calling your landlord. Now is is on yourself that to fix those issues. Yeah. So I w- I was just going to add when Abraham said the least amount is twenty five hundred. I'm going to say that is the least. I have to emphasize least, only because there is upfront costs. So keep in mind with that amount when I'm, when we're saying least. Do you really want to not have any additional funds when you move into your home? So if you're a person that always wants to have some type of cushion, my suggestion, of course, would be more, but the least would be the $2,500. Okay. We've done some episodes in the last year touching on the housing market and how a lot of folks say this isn't that it's a bad time to buy right now. What's your take on that? The reason individuals are saying that is because of the current interest rates. The interest rates are at their all-time high is what I hear. How I usually explain that to an individual that says that is that the interest rates are just where they were prior to COVID. Um, So during COVID, they were at their all-time low. So if most of the people that were ready to buy or that are now ready to buy, if they saw what the interest rates were during the COVID time, and now they see after COVID that the interest rates are raising back up again, of course, everyone is in a panic. But the reality is the interest rates are just where they were prior to COVID. But people are still buying homes every day, right? Yeah, thank you. That's what I always tell people. If I tell you, well, interest rates at 8% or 12% or 15% or 20%, that means nothing to you unless I tell you how much you're going to be paying for housing. So it's it's different if I tell you, well, your payment could be $1,100, $1,200, $1,300, $1,400, because our clients are thinking in terms of their household finances and capacity, those are the kinds of conversations that make more sense. People also have to keep in mind uh, something. Philadelphia is booming. Philadelphia is hot. Geographically, Philadelphia is in a very privileged geographic location. New Yorkers have taken notice of that. People in Washington have taken notice of that. People in Maryland have taken notice of that. Philadelphia is an old, beautiful city. And many people outside of Philadelphia have have taken notice of that. I, I think just the market altogether has changed, but also Philadelphia uh, has changed. We are not there yet experiencing the supply issues that other markets have experienced. OK, I was just about to ask you that. It sounds like you're saying there could be some competition with more people from New York Jersey, Maryland, Delaware. Is that the case? We've seen some activity and people should proceed with a sense of urgency, of course. But Philadelphia is not yet extremely unaffordable. Is naturally occurring affordable housing is still a thing in Philadelphia. Mary, how can people get money or assistance as they go through this home buying process? Can you run me through some of the programs that are available in Philly and how to access them? So the city of Philadelphia has a program that's called Philly First, where they can assist an individual with down payment and closing costs assistance at 6% of assistance not to exceed $10,000. That is a program that the housing counselors must apply for the homeowner, the potential homeowner. We have to do those applications for the consumer. The Urban League also has an in-house grant that we give away. It has um, decreased to $1,000. It was at $4,000. Also, there's a program that's called KFIT, 
and that is from Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency. It's 5% down payment and closing cost assistance. And when I say 5%, it's 5% of the sales price of the home. That one, it does not have a um, cap on the amount of the 5%. And I'm saying that because remember, Philly First was the cap is 10,000. With KFIT, there is no cap for the 5%. Then we have RNIH, that's a, a new program. Okay, so there's there's money, there's money available. There's, there's money out there. And remember that an obstacle for consumers have been being able to save up enough money to purchase a home because you do have your down payment and your closing costs that can be anywhere from 15,000 to 17,000 depends on the uh, sales price of the home. So the obstacle has been for a long time is being able to save that amount of money when most consumers are already paying rent where they live, right? And then other expenses. So these programs are here to help um, with regards to that obstacle. But I'll let Abraham talk a little bit more about the RNIH, which is a fairly new program where a client can receive $25,000 in down payment and closing cost assistance. Yeah, we, we're very proud of RNIH. Uh, there's a, a group of organizations in Philadelphia that, that came together to advance the needs of 5,000 black and brown families in Philadelphia. So RNIH is one of the programs that came out of that initiative. We partner with Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency to enhance some of the eligibility requirements for one of their programs, the KFLEX program. So RNIH is very peculiar because as, as, as Mary mentioned, the $25,000 that we provide in assistance come as a gift that can be used for student loan uh, payments as well. So will you have down payment, closing cost assistance, and student loans um, balances that can be paid using those funds. That program is for Philadelphians, by Philadelphians. People must be residing in Philadelphia at the time when they're applying for the program, and they must be looking to purchase homes in Philadelphia as well. So it's a pilot program. We're in the midst of of filling those 185 slots. We're close to 50 um, seats taken now, and then we're working towards um, the rest, um, hopefully by the end of the year. Abraham Reyes Pardo, Vice President of the Office of Housing and Diversion Services at the Urban League of Philadelphia, and Mary Harper, Director of Housing at the Urban League of Philadelphia, Thank you both so much for all these tips and for joining me on CityCast Philly. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. For more information about the Urban League of Philadelphia, check out the link in our show notes. That's all for today here on CityCast Philly. I hope you got a lot of information from this episode about buying a home in Philly. Share this with a friend, rate the show, leave us a review, and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to sign up for our morning newsletter, Hey Philly, to learn more about what else Philly's talking about. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Bye. Bye.